Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Well, as I uh, said at the end of the video last week, I'm going to work today on installing feeders here to this section of the railroad where we added the various turnouts and the crossover, as well as the flex track. So there's a little bit of thought that needs to go into where you want to place your feeders, and I'll go into that today. Plus, someone asked how you go about installing rail joiners on the ends of flex track and on the ends of the turnouts. So I'm going to provide you a demonstration of how I do that. So let's go ahead and get started. Hit that little red uh, subscribe button, and when the little bell comes up, click on it and click all. Let's begin by taking a look at how to prepare the ends of, of rails, or the ends of uh, pieces of flex track, uh, for installing uh, your rail joiners, because there is a little bit of a trick to it. Now, on most of the turnouts available today, or a lot of them anyway, uh, and specifically microengineering, and also on the ends of flex track, if you look right here real close, you'll see that there are no spikes right here. It starts on the second tie back, and they do that on purpose so that you'll be able to slide, see if I can do this here, a rail joiner in underneath of that tie. So that's pretty easy, pretty straightforward to do. But what about at the other end of a piece of rail that you've cut where there are spikes still present in the tie plate? Well, what I like to do is I take a number 17 exacto blade, so it's this chisel type blade, and the first thing I do is remove those spikes, like this. Just cut them off like that, and then go right on underneath of it, very slowly. And then carve away a little bit of that plastic, so that you've got a little bit of room underneath of that rail for the rail joiner to go on there. Do that on both sides, and then when it comes time to install the rail joiner, you can just slide it on here, and it will go right underneath of there. You can do that on both ends, and you'll be able to install your rail joiners without any problems, and it won't lift your rails up too much. Now let me show you though, what, I, what do you do though, if you do run into a situation where you haven't cut enough off, you got it soldered in place, and you end up with a little bump or a hump right where that joint is. Let's take a look back here at one of the uh, rail joiners that I did last week, and we'll see. Okay, so we're looking at one of the uh, joints between two, this turnout and the turnout in this crossover. So how do you tell, first off, if you have a hump right here? Well, you can take a steel ruler or any other kind of straight edge, put it right here on the track, and then, See if it teeter-totters. You can see this one does not have any teeter at all to it. So that's what you want to get. Now, how do you go about doing that? Well, first, take your soldering iron after it's well heated and place it right against the rail joiner where that solder needs to be melted. And let that warm up quite a bit. You want it to get good and warm. You want it to get so warm that you're going to start melting the ties right there underneath of that rail joiner. When it gets good and hot, then remove your soldering iron, take a screwdriver, and press down firmly on it. You want to press those rails down into the, the softened plastic ties, and hold that there until it has cooled, so maybe 30 seconds or so. And then remove it, and then check it again, and see how you've done. And you can bring these down to where it's a perfectly flush joint right there. You can also use a file and place that on it after it's been heated up and hold that down. So you want something that's going to be uh, able to press down firmly and squarely against those rails so that they will move down into that softened plastic top of the ties. And then when the solder has solidified again and the ties have uh, cooled off so that they're not soft, they'll hold these guys in place and everything will stay in that new position. So it's a pretty simple, straightforward way to do it, and it uh, does a very good job 
just do not overheat and burn your ties up. Just heat them enough to where they're softened. So you might want to test this with some scrap rails in order to uh, figure out just how far to let it go. Okay, let's take a look now at feeders. Let's first talk about where do you want to place feeders? Because we've got a turnout here, we've got two, two turnouts here for the crossover between the two rails. So, what do you have to think about? What do you have to consider when you're putting these in? Well, first off, if you look right here at this joint here, I have left this um, unsoldered. And I do that because if you get some expansion, then the rails can expand into this little gap. But more importantly, and more likely, uh, is if it starts to cool off down here, then these can shrink without causing any uh, problems with the track itself. So I usually leave uh, one of these within, oh, about every eight feet of, of track when I put it down, maybe every, uh, every two lengths of flex track, which are three feet long. And I do that, as I said, just to allow for shrinkage and uh, expansion uh, of these joints. Because these rails can move within the ties and they can uh, expand and contract. And if you do not do that, if you're in an area such as uh, up in an attic or out in your garage or a shed or any place where the temperature can fluctuate a lot, then these, this uh, heating and cooling can really cause a lot of problems and your rails can actually buckle, uh, particularly if it's an expanding in high temperatures. Uh, contraction, I've never run into that. I've never run into this problem at all because down here, uh, in the basement, the temperatures are well buffered. I keep it in between 60 and 70 degrees all the time, depending on whether the air conditioner is running or the heater. But at any rate, so that's something to always consider. However, because this is a slip joint, uh, I do not trust it for electrical connections. So you really uh, have to think about this if you're not going to solder your rail joiners. You almost need to install feeders to every piece of track that is connected by these loose rail joiners. Because once you start gluing these, uh, gluing the ballast uh, in place and doing painting and scenery work and all of that, this stuff, it's gonna seep in here and you're gonna lose your electrical connection here. And so this could go dead. If your feeder is out here, uh, which it is on my piece of track, then this piece of track would be dead. So that's why I'm adding a pair of feeders right here. Now, over here you can see I've added two feeders and they're gonna take care of this section, the six feet of track going back that direction, going downhill, and also this little section in here. Now fortunately, right through here, this piece of rail is continuous up to right here. And right here at this frog, there's a disruption in the rail because of this joint. So the electrical connection continues from here up to here but then it stops. So I then have to have a feeder right here for the next section and another feeder here. And this feeder provides power to this rail all the way down continuously down to here where it goes off. And it will continue for some distance because that's going to be a straight section of track connected to this uh, turnout. So we've got power provided to this section here. We've got power continuing from that feeder on down to here and then two feeders providing power out uh, to the end of the rail here, and this one providing it that way, and also all the way down to here. So, what else? Well, uh, did I cover back here? Well, as I said, you know, we've got this slip joint, so we put a feeder here in order to provide power to this section of the rail, since I don't trust that connection electrically, and the same thing here. So this one provides power down to here, this one here, that feeder, that single feeder, is going to provide power three feet down to the end of this section of track. And then finally, if we look over here, uh, I've only added one feeder because, as I said, that feeder here is going to provide power all the way down, so I don't need a red feeder here. I do need one here for the green. And the reason for that is power is going to come down here, and it's going to end right there. Uh, this section of track here will lose power at this point. So you have to have a feeder here for this section and this piece of rail, and then of course you've got power coming in here. And I'm going to be independently 
powering all of my frogs using the switch on my tortoise switch machine once I get those installed. And we installed those uh, last week, I believe it was, uh, at the beginning. I showed you how to add feeders to the underside of the frog itself. Okay, so that's how it goes. Now that you uh, know what you have to think about when you're installing feeders, let's go ahead, turn on the soldering iron, and we will install those feeders on the rails. Now, as I've previously showed you when I did the uh, feeder for the bottom of the frog, I'm going to put a little dog leg in these before we get started with it. And I'm going to do all of these at one time just so I don't have to keep picking up these pair of pliers. So that's it. And then we will go ahead and then I'll go ahead and uh, pre-tin the ends here, pre-tin the dog leg so that we can get a good quick solder joint there. And now we're ready to go ahead and now we're ready to make the final connection uh, to these uh, sides of these rails. Now, this piece here, uh, as you can see, I'm going to be attaching it right here to the side of the rail joiner. And I'm going to get it kind of low so that most of it's going to be covered by the ballast. And then I'm going to have to reach under with one hand and hold it in place. There we go. So you can see it's right there at the very bottom of the rail, of the rail joiner. So I'm just going to heat that up until the solder melts. Oh, it popped up on me. So I'm going to put it right there and it comes out, it's basically hugging the bottom of that rail there. And we'll let that cool. And then I'll give it a good, oops, now that's why I give it a good tug. It popped loose on me. So we're going to put that in here again, feed it through, and I'm going to hold it this time here. And we're going to solder it again. So this is the reason that I recommend that you give your solder joints a good tug when you're installing these feeders because you know, they can pop loose on you. Okay. Now I'm going to let that sit there and cool a while before I give it a good tug this time. And then I'll drop it into place. Bend it a little bit. And on the back side, it doesn't matter where it is because nobody's going to see it as long as it's down there below the level of the uh, railhead. Nobody's going to see it back here. So you can just let that sit and get a good joint. Those are both done now. Now that we've got it, we've got the, uh, let these guys tend, I'm going to pull it down underneath here and hit it with some heat, just enough to melt that solder and get a good connection with the lower bottom, the bottom side of this uh, rail here and let that cool a while. I don't want to disturb that and pull on it until it's ready, but as, uh, as I showed you a minute ago, uh, if you pull on these and it's not a good solder joint, it'll pop loose. So you need to make sure that you've got a good solder joint by doing that. Test it every time. Okay, now let me, uh, let me test it. Okay, that's solid. And now I'm gonna put this one on. Like this. And hold it. No, nope, didn't get a good solder joint that time. This really is a job for Two people, one person to hold the uh, hold the feeders underneath of the layout while somebody else works on top and uh, does the soldering. Let me check that one again. 
Okay, everything is, oh, did that one? No, okay, that's good, that's good. Everything is solid now. We'll move on to this one since it's a single and pre-tint it again. Just want a little blob of solder there. And then, I'm gonna give that a little bit of a backward bend so that it will be pressed against the side of the rail here, not uh, come loose. Okay, now reaching under. And my microphone is rubbing up against the uh, side of the layout and that's why you might hear some noises when I'm doing this. There. Okay, that's good and solid. Come on back here now and we'll do two more. Let's uh, install these last two back here and that will be it. Okay, now let me uh, get to a position where I can pull this one into place and Pull that one so it'll lay up against the side of the rail. Okay, so that's got those done. So we've got all of the uh, rail feeders in place now. Okay, so that takes care of all of the feeders that we needed to add in order to provide power to this Lynchburg section right here. There will be more that will be added in the future when uh, we add additional pieces of track for this uh, spur that goes off to the uh, industrial area downtown there. And uh, of course, we'll have to do lots of feeders for that section because there's lots of turnouts back in that switching area. But uh, this might look kind of uh, bright and garish right now, but once I've painted the sides of these rails, uh, I'll come back and I'll spray paint them and we'll show that. And once this has all been ballasted and scenic, you won't even notice this kind of thing. Uh, it tends to just disappear uh, and your eye is drawn elsewhere anyway. Well, that's a wrap for today's video. Next week, we'll be taking a look at installing the tortoise switch machines here on the layout. And I'll show you one way that you can go about controlling them without using accessory decoders. So have a great weekend, have a great week, and I'll see you here next week with that video on tortoises and hopefully control panels. Bye now.